Hello once again, lovely people. Welcome back to the Nova channel, we'll call it. Um, I just wanted to share with you the latest update. So, I was in the process of rebuilding all of my legs, and I did find that with the right tool, you can actually disassemble a leg without taking off these two motors. So, that was awesome, but when I got to this leg, unfortunately, one of my embedded nuts was just spinning like crazy and I just could not get it to grasp, could not get it out. So I actually had to hot knife and cut this leg in half. In fact, we could see it over here in my scrap pile of cleanings. So this was the nut that had gotten stuck and there was just nothing I could do about it. So I had to cut it in half and reprint it. <laughs> so I've been waiting for a bit to do that. And once I get our leg rebuilt, we'll be able to get this on the ground and test it. But anyway, the purpose of this video is to show that I've gone ahead and installed my three PIR sensors, like I was explaining in a previous video. And I want to try and do some, you know, 360 degree detection, as well as possibly some kind of follow me code to go along with that. So as you can see here, I have a front one. Um, I was going to put it in her head. But then I realized that that's kind of low and kind of shielded by this. So for a human standing in front, she would just pick up your legs. So I didn't think that was the best place. And since we already have this housing on the top, I figured I would design a similar looking one for the PIR sensor. So the front one sits there in a sensor and installs on the previous screws that are there, which is an added benefit. It does make this whole joint a little more secure and these lids are less likely to break now. And then the side ones, as I showed in the previous video, I, I want to test out creating these little shrouds so that I can turn these now and, and decide on how much of the sensor to expose to which side, etc. They're on really crappy at the moment because I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> um, the wiring beneath this hood has really gone amok and I must do something about it. Uh, I, I, probably going to try and come up with a couple, two or three actual wiring harnesses so I don't have just a plethora of loose wires and DuPont connectors under there because I can barely remove her hood right now and it's, it's getting pretty ugly. So yes, I need to do something about that and then that's also why these sensors are not sitting very well. But you can see and get the idea. So if I turn that a little bit that way, it'll block some of the front detection. If I turn it that way, it'll open it up more towards the front. So between the three of them, I've been doing a little bit of testing, unfortunately, with her on a shelf, on her stand, not walking on the ground. So it's been a little tricky to, cause to walk around her 360 degrees. I unfortunately don't have a warehouse-sized lab here in front of me, so... Um, yeah, but I'll show you how it works generally. I've, I've, I've coded her up just to in, emit beeps at different tones depending on where I'm standing so that I could test her rather than code new display which I'll eventually do for the OLED and the R RGBs. Um, the issue with that I'm not sure if I've mentioned it to you guys now that we have a separate nano from the Mega, the Arduino nano you either have to disconnect the SDL, SCL lines SDA sorry, SCL lines or pop the nano out of its socket and, and program it which is a bit of a pain, so I didn't bother to do it for this little demo. But yes, her display will probably show, you know, forward, left, right. Four, I, I have one, two, three, four, five, six directions I detect. Forward, left, forward, left, then right, forward, right, and then rear. So forward, obviously, is just the forward sensor. Right, forward is the right and forward sensor. Right is just the right sensor, and then same for the left, left front and then left, and then rear is when it's just these two sensors. Oh, and then also I have a, a, a greet, <laughs> which I'm calling it that, which if she detects all three sensors, that means you're pretty much standing over her, so I'll make her do some kind of little begging move or something to that effect. And then of course there's stop when you're out of range or not moving. So I'll demo that right now for you really quick, and you can see how it's working. But aside from that, let's just open her up really quick.
and you can see, I hope, the nightmare that I've faced myself with now in wiring. Um, hopefully I'm going to be able to come up with a couple of nice little wiring harnesses to solve the problem, but here we go. So first of all, yes, this is, you know, I soldered it on, so it's pretty much part of the lid. Um, but beyond that depth, I don't even know if I could take this off to show you. But I think you can see, it's become quite a mess where I can almost barely close the lid now. I mean, we have the PS2 cable going up there. And then I have the now the two PIR sensors, the reset button, the buzzer comes from there. And then in the front here, another PIR sensor. Uh, yeah, And then, you know, the wiring itself, never mind the cover, is, is not the greatest. So... Chris has got some work cut out for himself, and I'm going to rewire that ASAP. But again, let me button this back up and show you how the sensors work. Okay, guys, so I'm going to try and demonstrate <coughs> her uh, three sensors right now. I am holding a piece of white poster board in front of me so I can kind of control when she sees me and not, but it's still a little tricky. She's picking up my head right now. Okay, so I'm standing right in front of her, so she is seeing me. Now I'll slowly turn around and move to the right. So here we go. And you'll hear the tone change as I move around to her complete right. And then I'll move back around to the front again. Now I'm standing in front of her. Now I'll come around to her left. really difficult with her on a shelf like this. And then her reverse, which would be the two side ones picking her up. So here's front again. And now if I stand perfectly still for three seconds, she'll stop. But the second I flinch, she'll pick me up again. And then finally, when I get really close to her, all three will trigger and she'll know that you're right next to her. So it kind of works pretty good. It needs a little tweaking here and there and it's been hard to test her because as I've shown one of her legs is broken but we'll be back on the ground soon enough to test her. So guys just real quick I wanted to share this bizarro situation with you a uh, scenario. So I was just looking through YouTube this afternoon and on my news feed came up this video on, on five new robots coming in the future and, and now, not in the future, sorry, comparable to Spot Mini. And it was just a couple of days ago. So I'm like, cool, I'll watch it. And they went through three or four of them. This is Animal, which looks pretty cool. You can actually put wheels on it too. So as I'm watching, I was like, oh my God. Who's dreaming here? What planet am I on? Punch me, am I sleeping? Guys, that was just so bizarre to me. So this robot is not an actual thing yet. It's mostly concept and still on the design boards and far away from being produced. But come on now. I mean, <laughs> if you're not getting this here, not only is my robot called Nova, but... No, mine is Nova SM3. Theirs is SN3 Nova. And the further funny thing about this is if you remember from one of my very first videos, I showed that I've also sized my Nova down to micro servo size, and I called her Nova SN3 for Spot Nano. Whereas this one that I'm building now is Nova SM3 Spot Micro in honor of the Spot Micro pro pro project. But I was just like, <laughs> the YouTube gods are either warning me or watching over me or something's going on here. But I just wanted to say for the record, I, and I hope you all believe me, I think you could tell that I'm a pretty honest guy, that I had no clue of this until today. So if anybody stole anybody's name, they stole mine. Highly unlikely, it's just coincidence, but a crazy coincidence at that. So if you're superstitious, have fun pondering that one. And and by the way, for the record, Nova has been on my plate since I had children, two girls, 25 years ago, 
begging with my wife to let me name one of them Nova Christine, but it never happened. So that, that's kind of the explanation for me naming my robot Nova, and there's plenty of living proof in my life for that. So, All right, guys, just wanted to share that weird piece of bizarro world info with you. I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Okay, so that's another video. I guess I will talk to you all soon. Like, share, and subscribe, and have a great night.